Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Hope you guys are having a great time. So today I wanted to go ahead and kind of talk to you guys about all the teasers that have been popping up with Path of Exile uh, for 3.24. We got a nice little forum post here with all of them. So we're just going to kind of go through, watch them together, talk about them, have some discussions. Uh, I'm also prepping to update the RF guide with the new flavor of the month, which I imagine is going to be chiefed in this go around. I'm doing another prep run like I normally do. I'm not uploading these to YouTube because I have like literally 1,412 RF videos on YouTube. So check out the live streams if you guys want some info, but expect some RF content specifically to be dropped around the time of the patch notes when we're kind of getting all of our information. So more of that later, let's go ahead and jump into the teasers. So one of them actually just dropped like 30 minutes ago. So we've got, uh, let's start from the top right here. In Path of Exile Necropolis, you can automate many instant skills and war cries with two new skill gems. I have not even, uh, see this one here. What is this? Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, I'm game Mark. director on Path of Exile. We're adding two new skill gems in 324. Automation, while the skill is active, supported instant spells trigger automatically when off cooldown with 150% multiplier with reduced recovery. You cannot cast support skills direct. Interesting. Oh, Automation and call to arms. While the skill is active, supported war cries trigger automatically went off cooldown. Okay, so literally like automated gems. These skill gems can be toggled on to auto cast linked instant skills the moment they're off cooldown. We've removed the capacity to bind any instant skill to left click as a result. This not only allows you to retain the same behavior as before, but it will now auto-cast the skills while you are stationary. Players who use a gamepad will appreciate this one. We've got a lot more to reveal at our development update livestream on March 21st. Thanks for watching and see you then. So this one is pretty cool, but they said we have removed the capacity to bind any instant skill to left click. I don't know if I like that. And the only, the number one reason why I say this is socket pressure in Path of Exile is extreme, right? So I'm, I don't know that this literally is like minus one gem socket for any build that runs Molten Shell on left click. So it's just kind of a weird one to me, but I can understand, especially with Path of Exile 2. In PoE 2, we're going to be moving over towards your gems have your uh, sockets and links rather than being tied to your piece of gear. So it feels like it's more of a something pushing more towards PoE 2. It's kind of interesting. I'll have to see how this feels. I'm I'm kind of skeptical. I'm not going to lie. Molten Shell left click is cozy and I don't always have the gem sockets to automate it. So we'll see what's happening. For sure, we'll see what's happening. Let's jump into the next one here. All right, what do we have here? Uh, in the Necropolis expansion, stack decks and diviner strong boxes no longer drop div cards for boss exclusive unique items. I kind of like that. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. In 324, we have a little change to divination cards. Low quality. Stack decks and diviner, diviner strong boxes can no longer drop cards for boss specific uniques. Okay. While this reduces access to those uniques, farming the bosses will now feel more meaningful. We've got a lot right. more to reveal. I don't That's kind of true. I'll be honest. I'm not a big fan of uh, pulling boss items out of stack decks. I mean, you could still find rare items for sure, like really rare things. But I do prefer having tar like focusing on the bosses for the item is better than randomly pulling it out of a stack deck because you still have ways of getting boss drops from like gambling, right? It doesn't have to be stack deck. So I think this one is good for uh, in general. What do we have here? An Acropolis expansion using a Vol Orb on a map can no longer cause it to be unidentified. I didn't read this one. And there's a new set of corrupted implicits for maps. Okay. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. Let's talk about corrupting maps. When you use a Vol Orb on a map, the map no longer has a chance to become unidentified. Instead, we've created a set of implicits that affect the area in strange and potentially profitable ways. Some are simple, like increasing item quantity or okay. monster pack size. Okay, I like this. Others might increase the effect of your atlas tree on the area. Okay. You could even roll a mod that removes soul gain prevention from the player, allowing you to absolutely spam Val skills in the map. I don't care for that one too much, but I can understand the appeal. 
If you're lucky, you could even roll a mod that makes all map device crafts free for that map. Well, that's pretty cool too. All right. You'll have to discover the rest for yourself. We've got a lot more to reveal about 324. That, that one's pretty cool, I'll be honest. I'm a little sad about the unidentified maps, unidentified maps, but I don't care too much. What I used to do is if I would vol and I would get unidentified maps, I would put them in a tab and there was a sex and I'm guessing they're removing it for like 20% pack size or something in unidentified maps, but it's a bit tedious to set up. So I don't mind when things like that go. Uh, Path of Exile Necropolis modifiers to items place in the Horty Crafting Station will now be displayed when hovering over the craft button. Hi. I'm Mark Roberts, game Hi, director Mark. on Path of Exile. We're going to have to snip that. <laughs> Notice something different about this harvest UI? In 324, we're changing the screen to have the item hover always visible as you craft. Uh, this prevents the frustration of mousing back and forth clicking hundreds back and of forth. times as yep. you refine your items. Yep. We'll That's pretty cool. Normally in harvest crafting, you, you literally like, you click boom, and then you got to select it. Boom, you got to select, and you can actually misclick really easily like that. So that's a nice change for sure. Okay. I thought I was going to crock with, oh, Veiled, oh, I saw this one. I think I've seen from here and down. Um, so in Path of Exile Necropolis, Veiled Orbs have been reworked. Flasks can be corrupted. Masters are no longer mutually exclusive and can appear in the same map. Uh, and the craft to upgrade your ammo to Talisman has been moved to Bestiary. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. In 324, the Masters, Alva of Incursion, Nico of Delve, Einhar of Bestiary. I've never actually seen Jun's or June's face before until this. I don't know. I always just see the hooded figure, right? Or not hooded, but you know what I mean. And Jun of Betrayal will no longer be mutually exclusive and can appear in the same map. Speaking of Betrayal, that's we're making the following changes. Actually, I wonder how that's going to affect our Atlas with having multiple masters spawning in the map. I mean, I normally focus one at a time anyway, but that's kind of interesting. The Ashling reward of remove a random modifier, replacing it with the Veiled modifier instead, has been moved to the function of the Veiled Chaos Orb. That is an interesting one, because I think they talked about something like this in PoE 2 already. This is a very unique change, because Veiled Chaos in the past is literally just a chaos. It rolls everything, and then you get a Veiled line. This is kind of nice because you can't necessarily brick an item. Normally what would happen is very unlikely, but say you're doing, you have three suffixes and you do suffixes cannot be changed veiled chaos. There's a chance you can get unlucky and you get two random mods with a veiled mod and now your item is full. And the reason why that's weird is if you say only had two mods, you could do suffixes cannot be changed and then like scour it and then reveiled chaos. But tune in for a little bit more here. And has been removed from safe houses. Veiled Chaos Orbs will now exclusively drop from Katarina, the leader of the Immortal Syndicate. This is interesting. This makes the orb more powerful, but also allows for full trading of this craft between players and a more clear path to target farming this orb by maximizing your Katarina kills. So in the past, uh, some ways to get Veiled Orbs, I believe, I think it was Ashling, lower level, could drop you Veiled Chaos. It's a really rare chance to drop from maps. There is an Eater Altar that could rain a bunch of Veiled Chaos. And you would occasionally get them. As a guy who enjoys betrayal, but not the manipulating of the safe houses, I just like the Blitz Katarina. I really hope that this drops once every time. I feel like it's not going to, but this is kind of cool. I just have to see how annoying it's going to be. The capability to add higher than 20% quality to weapons, armors, and flasks has been removed from betrayal, okay. and these reward outcomes have been replaced. Your flasks can now be corrupted by Val Orbs. So before we continue this, this is a big topic of all the changes. This one is actually like an, a change. So if you notice on the line of text here, instead of it saying 20% less fire damage taken, it's now five maximum fire res. Unfortunately, to the way I play Righteous Fire Chieftain, this is a direct nerf because I actually run Ruby, Topaz, and Sapphire flasks um, at 90 max res. The thing is, with this change specifically, it's really hard to say, well, why don't you just get 85 res and use the flask? Because you're not going to have 100% uptime on the flask all the time, specifically when you're bossing, and that's kind of the most annoying part with Righteous Fire. The thing is, though, on the flip side, with us gaining bonus maximum res, 
there may be an option for like a transcendence righteous fire chieftain because you can get a shit ton of max res on your flask and in the situation of transcendence you're already so tanky the flask is kind of pushing you above the edge uh but we'll have to see that's more end game that's not really very beginner friendly but you know before everything is all doom 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 i'm really curious to see what happens with this which will add a random quality value from minus 10 to plus 10. good luck the craft that upgrades an amulet to a talisman has instead been moved to bestiary league since the captured monsters in bestiary can like be traded this. you can now trade for the amulet craft at your leisure this is nice well that's a nice change because a lot of people will try to go for very specific implicits on their amulet which is gated behind uh maybe i shouldn't have said implicit but the corrupted the talismans basically have very very niche affixes um, some of them are like 50% of X damage type is taken as fire. Some of them are percentage all attributes, increased damage, etc. So I like that that's itemizable so you can trade it rather than having to go through the entire safe house. You guys got, I'm not a big fan of the whole like put X person in X location for the safe house. That's still going to be in the game, obviously, but they're really shuffling it up. So I'm curious what gets added there. On Path of Exile, Necropolis opening breach hands in the heat of battle got easier. They now open when you walk over. Hi. I'm Mark Roberts, Game Director on Path of Exile. We have a short and sweet update for you today. The Breach Hand chests spawned during Breach Encounters have always been very annoying oh. to click on in the heat of battle. In 324, we will be changing them to no longer require clicking to open. Just run near them and they'll open automatically. That's a cool change. Only thing is, a lot of the time Breach is not, I don't know, it feels like Breach is really hard to justify using. But this is definitely a nice a nice change, especially for people who play RF and just shield charge through the whole breach constantly. This is pretty nice for sure. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, Game Director on Path of Exile. If you're the kind of player that uses a lot of socket altering currency to craft your items, this one's for you. When applying some currency items like orbs of fusing or jeweler's orbs, you will now be able to constantly use those orbs without having to repeatedly click your mouse, or the equivalent on controller. As long as you hold down control and left click, you will use orbs until you run out or until the goal is achieved. No more Meaning finger that pain. Jeweler's orbs wrist can be pain. held down on an item until it achieves maximum sockets, or orbs of fusing can be held down until it achieves maximum links. I'm surprised they didn't put the MTX on there for a fireworks, so the fireworks pop up and go like you win because there's an MTX for that. So that's nice though. People have been asking for this for literally like 10 years. <laughs> Actually like 10 years. So that's pretty cool. Uh, oh, this is the trade one. This one's cool. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, Hi, Mark. game director on Path of Exile. Today, we've got a handy new shortcut for you when trading with other players. By holding down control and shift, you can click a stackable item yep. to move all copies of it in your inventory yep. straight into the trade window. This should make life easier when exchanging vast amounts of currency items. We've got Normally, I don't really care for that, but I would say where it makes the biggest appeal for me is when you're trading with people in different realms, like trying to connect to someone who has like 250 latency in that area because it's like Europe or wherever it is, Australia. It's such a pain in the ass with all of the delay, so very nice quality of life and then this one is talking about pantheon right hi i'm mark roberts game director on path of exile this is the first in a series of videos covering the upcoming changes in 324 huh, boys? in an effort to streamline the process of making multiple characters we're changing how pantheon powers work when you upgrade a pantheon power with a divine vessel you will now get to keep that upgrade on all characters across the league very nice. Each character will still need to defeat the gods to unlock the base pantheon powers, but the upgrades will only need to be acquired once per league. Very nice. We'll talk more about what we're doing with this content in our development. Very nice. I have to say one thing specifically I really like about that is for me personally, Brian King usually is my freeze immunity. So having to wait to unlock it on other characters and then like, you know, go into the maps, etc. It's kind of a pain in the ass. I don't know if they said there you just have to kill the campaign boss or if you have to kill the boss after, but you just don't have to use the Divine Vessel. I'm curious on kind of how that works, but overall pretty excited. I'm very curious to see what they add in on later quality of life updates. And of course, super stoked to see what they're doing overall with the game. So 
Catch you guys later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. If you guys enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys later, boys.